Imagine seeking advice from your pastor, someone you admire and respect, only to have him publicly shame and berate you from the pulpit. Unfortunately, this is commonplace at Trinity Church in Scottsdale, Arizona, where Mark Driscoll is the pastor. I've produced a video on him before, but for those of you who haven't seen that video, let me give you a brief rundown of all things Mark Driscoll. Driscoll was the pastor of a megachurch in Seattle called Mars Hill from 1996 until 2014. In evangelical spaces, he was well known and still is known for his aggressive and proudly authoritarian preaching style. He eventually resigned from Mars Hill following allegations that he bullied and emotionally abused staff members. He's since relocated to Arizona and founded Trinity Church. Controversy has followed Driscoll for most of his preaching career. He's artificially inflated the sales of his book, Real Marriage, in order to get it on the New York Times bestseller list. After another evangelical pastor was outed for having an affair with a male escort, Driscoll posted online that the pastor's wife was to blame for the affair because she had let herself go. And Driscoll has fired staff members for simply disagreeing with him. The list goes on and on. Pretty much all controversy involving Mark Driscoll boils down to his need for power and control. His sermons are fueled by misogyny, sexism, homophobia, and transphobia, and he constantly talks conservative politics from the pulpit. Although he has been rebuked by many of his fellow pastors and was the recent focus of an expose on Mars Hill, Driscoll continues to run his current church like a dictatorship, using fear and shame to control his congregants. The following clip that Drew and I will be reacting to is a perfect example of this. For context, this clip came from the Q&A portion of Driscoll's recent sermon series entitled Real Romance and was uploaded to Driscoll's YouTube channel called Real Faith. All right, let's jump in. So we're going to answer one question. I don't know what it is. You picked it. So it's going to be good or bad, but in a minute we'll know. And thank you for sending in your questions. You'll be So for some context, this was taken from like one of his sermons about it was like called real romance or something like that. And I don't know for certain, but I'm assuming that congregants sent in their questions for Mark and his wife to answer. So I'm assuming whoever asked this question is in the audience. Yeah. Or I feel at, like that's a pretty safe bet. At the very least, they're watching this live, I would imagine. Yeah. Be good at this one because it's a guy, to a guy. So I get to rebuke a man? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, good. Says He's like so excited to rebuke somebody. <laughs> And I feel like that's really on brand for Mark Driscoll Definitely. because that's that's his whole thing is like speaking truth and love, which basically means that love. <laughs> I'm going to berate you and excuse it by, oh, I can do this because God allows me to do it. Yeah. My girlfriend and I have been together 10 years. And <laughs> 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 10 years. You can't even be president for 10 years. <laughs> Like, that's amazing. <laughs> Ten years. That's what it says. Okay. And have sex. Well, okay. Is this sin? <laughs> it's kind of blurry, right? Yeah, no, it's, it's, yeah. Too, yeah, it's totally, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Yes, it's a sin, yeah. <laughs> it feels like real love. Go for it. Um, so let me say that everything looks different when you're a dad. <laughs> okay, so if you're a single guy, you put the hat on, you're like, oh, we love each other. We're married in God's eyes. Like, no, his eyes are blazing red, and he's not even blinking because he's a father. Okay, um, and the, the, before a man is your, uh, 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 <laughs> I just, okay, I'm trying to, Holy Spirit will show up. Okay, um, I feel like he's acting like them being married for 10 years is this like crazy thing that he's never heard of before and that it's so ridiculous i mean he like l overly laughed about it yeah I and i just don't know why it's funny or why it's crazy i mean it's it's not it's not funny or crazy but you know when he's up there laughing at this he is then positioning himself and everyone who thinks like him above this person mocking what they are doing as yeah. ridiculous regardless of any kind of outcome because that is against the rules mm -hmm. so for a woman is your girlfriend or your wife she's the father's daughter 
And so the question is not- I really have a problem with that entire concept. The idea, like, because basically what he's saying is that a woman doesn't belong to herself. She doesn't have autonomy. Yeah. She belongs to either God or her husband yeah. or both. The reason why it is a problem for a woman to be in a bad situation where she could potentially be harmed is because she belongs to a man and a man could therefore be harmed. Therefore, it's bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think what he says next makes it even worse. Like, well, does this work for me? The question is, does that work for him? And if a guy wants all the benefits of marriage without any of the commitments, he is by definition selfish. They have been together for 10 years. How is he not committed? Yeah, I would say that that is a very long time to be committed to somebody. And there is no way that a relationship like this can actually be a healthy romantic relationship. This is more of a mother-son relationship. She doesn't marry him and have child with him because he is her child. This is a boy who can shave. And so what happens with these guys, they, they don't want to move into that next step and level of maturity, masculinity, and responsibility. And so he knows all of this because they didn't have a ceremony to make it like official in his eyes. I mean, the, yeah. the relationship, how is the relationship different if they actually walk down an aisle and say specific words? Like he, he is saying that this is obviously uh, not a healthy relationship. He doesn't know that. He has yeah. no evidence to, to demonstrate that. Yeah. And this obviously must be a mother-son dynamic. Again, he has no reason to say that other than he's going against the rules that I think that you should follow. You can say, Mark, yes, that they are going against the rules that you think should be followed, but you can't then just suddenly make up that this must be the dynamic between them because of that. Yeah. I mean, there really wasn't like that much information included in the question. All the person said was that we've been dating for 10 years and it feels like real love, but is it a sin? Like that's all the information they have. And yet they're already making all of these assumptions about their relationship and yeah. calling it unhealthy and calling him irresponsible and all this stuff based off of their, their own belief system. So yeah, sex is for marriage and marriage is for men. And you know you're a boy when you want sex, but not marriage. How does he know that this guy only wants sex? Yeah. They've given no indication. There's no nothing in their question to indicate that. Obviously, this person, if they've been dating for 10 years, is very committed to his girlfriend. Yeah. Clearly, he doesn't just... I mean, I, I don't know for sure, but like, I would think that... He doesn't just want sex if they've been together that For long. 10 years, there has yeah. to be something more to their relationship than that. So I don't understand why they're jumping to this conclusion. Yeah. So, <laughs> and every man starts as a complete idiot. <laughs> no, you just got to own that. I did. I did. And, uh, I mean, I met you and we started dating and we started sleeping together. Not for 10 years, good Lord. <laughs> 10 years, it's crazy. I mean, can you, can you imagine? Well, once is a sin. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. I read the same book, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we- okay, I, I wanna point out something here because I feel like this is a really interesting interaction they just had. He's acting as though like, well, he's saying, yes, having sex before marriage is wrong, but having sex for 10 years before marriage, like that is just insane. Like yeah. I, I messed up, but I didn't mess up that bad is essentially what he's saying. Yeah. And his wife interjects and reminds him, well, doing it once is even wrong according to our understanding of the Bible. You're no better than this guy. Yeah, you're no better. And instead of being like, oh, you know, you're right. Like, I see your point. He immediately, immediately is like, well, yeah, I know. I read the same book as you. Yeah. And this is so on brand for Mark Driscoll. He yeah. cannot be ever told that he's wrong, even by his own wife. He always has to be the one in control of every single situation. And yeah. he always has to be the one that's correct. Yeah. And so I just, I don't know. I just think that this interaction is really sad. Because you know, his wife is trying to make a point right. <laughs> and he just kind of belittles her. Right. And when Mark Driscoll 
blames his wife, first of all, for the fact that they had sex. If you look at his other material, mm-hmm. his other writing, then you realize that this is a pattern. You know, his, yeah. his wife says something or thinks something or does something and it affects their dynamic in some way. And really, ultimately, uh, even if he participated in it or was corrected or whatever, she's really to blame and like, ha ha ha. Yeah, I might have done something wrong, but like, oh, it's, it's OK. Yeah. Yeah. For context, apparently in one of the books that he wrote, he talks about how he and his wife had sex before marriage. But at the time, he didn't realize it was a sin. And we talked to his girlfriend, who is now his wife, about it. She was like, oh, yeah, I, I knew it was a sin, but I just didn't really think about it that much. Yeah. And so then he, like, kind of blames her. He's like, well, I, you know, didn't know it was a sin. So, like, I'm kind of not as guilty as she is, basically. This is a pattern for him. Though. Yeah. We started sleeping together. And then our story is, I, I, I was reading the Bible and it said it was a sin. And I was like, oh. So it was either I'm going to you know, repent of my sin, bring our marriage under the authority of God's word and ask for the father to bless our relationship or live in defiance and rebellion of God's authority, assuming that somehow things will work out without God's blessing. And so, I mean, I'll I'll be honest with you guys. The thing I treasure in my life is God's anointing. Okay, so I want to make special note here that he's saying that you know, he could, it would be unwise to assume that things are going to work out without God's blessing. Mm -hmm. You know, work out could mean the relationship is healthy, maybe, or that they're successful in life, or that like generally their well-being is at a a higher level, Mm -hmm. right? That's that's what we can maybe assume work out means. Yeah. Um, But as this continues... I think that you see that they hold on to the idea that God's blessing allows you to succeed and have happy, healthy relationships. However, you may not actually succeed or have happy, healthy relationships if you have God's blessing. So it really does what they want when they want. And it's a really nonsensical concept. So just pay attention to how he's talking about how the supernatural and blessings can affect the natural, actual world. I would rather be broke with God's anointing than rich without it. I would rather be sick without God's an- with God's anointing than without it. Like, whatever you've got, if you don't have God's anointing, you're not in a good place. And God doesn't bless our plan. He blesses his plan. And God blesses his word. And those who place themselves under his word, they place themselves in the place that God would bless. Okay, so you can have a life that is going totally off the rails and be terrible. You can be broke, be lonely and still have God's blessing, but you can also be none of those things and have God's blessing. And having God's blessing is where you want to be regardless. There are many times coming up, I believe, that equate God's blessing to Mm well-being and to having healthy relationships and this and that and the other. Remember this point where he says that God's blessing does not correlate to any of those things, but it still is where you need to be. So I'm a Bible guy. So as soon as I realized what we're doing is wrong, it's sinful, it's disobedient to the word of God, I repented, we stopped sleeping together, we met with our pastor, we walked through a premarital process, we eventually got married, and now we've been faithfully married for 30 years. And so it's not that there's no hope for a guy like this, but I'll just tell you, when you suppress the truth and you make excuses and you make yourself the exception to the rule and you say it feels like love. Well, if it feels like love, then freaking get married <laughs> and make it official. Yeah. She's not in a safe place spiritually. Well, because she's not a well she, He's not under God's authority. So she's not. Okay. So his wife said that she's not in a safe s- space spiritually, which I can understand from her perspective why she would think that but then mark says she's not a well person yeah i don't understand how he has reached that conclusion about this woman that he knows nothing about because that's almost like saying that there's something wrong with her mental health because she's not married see they see health and, you know, well-being through like this spiritual lens, you have to do these specific practices in order to be healthy spiritually. But then they equate being healthy spiritually with being healthy non-spiritually, like 
mentally, Mm -hmm. having problems with your brain or your relationships or your health or something like that. But those are completely two different domains. You can't say that because something is, you know, not okay spiritually, that it's then going to make you not okay in some other way. You can't, you can't demonstrate any kind of correlation or crossover or effects exchange between like the supernatural and the non-supernatural. It, it doesn't work like that, but they're, they're having it both ways. Yeah. And even if he was presented with evidence to the contrary, like if this woman went to a psychiatrist and they told her that she's mentally fit yeah he would say well that that's just worldly terms yeah and she's still mentally unwell because she's not following my particular understanding of what the bible says yeah it's an unfalsifiable uh way to define harm so that you can basically just kind of make up a theological system and say this you are experiencing harm even when there's literally no evidence yeah. of that whatsoever mm-hmm And that's what they're doing in this entire thing. (laughs) They're like so far saying all of these horrible, awful things are happening when they have literally no evidence to suggest that it's happening. And they're doing it from the pulpit with these people probably in the audience. Yeah. Like to me, this is just crazy. Under God's authority. So she's not under healthy spiritual authority. She's not safe emotionally because he can leave at any time. There's no commitment for him staying there but he stayed for 10 years but there's no commitment. there's obviously a level of commitment but there's no spiritual commitment see you can say there's no spiritual commitment so therefore there's no real commitment well and they also the other thing is if they do get married there's no guarantee that he won't leave then yeah (laughs) like divorce is a thing that exists why like being married isn't gonna prevent him from leaving or her from leaving that's just a thing that happens sometimes in relationships i I just don't understand how they're getting all of this all that matters is a theological system outcomes are completely irrelevant but we're going to pretend that outcomes are irrelevant and that we can predict them based on the spiritual (laughs) system And there's actually, she's not safe physically because there's a higher rate of physical abuse in those types of relationships where they live together. I, is that even true? I I, I don't know if that's even true. Present the statistics on that where, where people, like, how are you defining those conditions where people live together um, and they say that they have a loving marriage and don't report any kind of abuse They've been together for a minimum of 10 years. Like, is there some study or statistic that shows that there's a higher level of physical abuse there? If so, then please show that. Because so far, all you've done is say they've broken the rules, which causes spiritual harm, which causes mental illness, which also causes physical abuse. Yeah. Like, where's the actual demonstrable link between any of yeah. this? It's just, it's snowballed from asking a simple like honest question to oh you must be physically abusive yeah. like you are beating this woman because you're you're not married because you didn't do a specific ritual one day yeah that's why <laughs> so it's there's a fear probably of commitment or something under there maybe his parents have been divorced a bunch and he doesn't want to take that step because he doesn't want to be divorced but but you don't know what? that why are you assuming why are you assuming all of this you don't know that for a fact <laughs> like she has no reason to think that at all yeah there's no literally indication no that's reason. the case <laughs> It's you got to work through that stuff and she needs to work through why she's willing to tolerate that. Um, That's that's a form of manipulation. It's not security for a woman. And she's also assuming that his girlfriend has a a problem with the fact that they're not married. And there was nothing in the question to indicate that that's the case. Like she could be completely fine and maybe that's what she wants. Maybe marriage isn't something that's important to her and she doesn't care whether or not her boyfriend proposes. Yeah. And she's calling him manipulative now. This is a form of manipulation. What what What? is manipulation? Not going through the ritual? That's it? Yeah. Just not doing the ritual that you like is manipulation? Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, they're just making so, so many assumptions based on nothing. At this point, this is pretty severe us versus them rhetoric. Like, we're yeah. the good guys because we believe the specific thing, and these other people do or believe something that's ever so slightly different, and therefore they're kind of through and through evil. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and she has more value than that. 
God values her as his daughter and she deserves to be that. Now are, is she saying that she's somehow less valuable because she's not married? I mean, she's at least saying that she's being treated as if she's not valuable because she's not married. I mean, that's still very insulting, though. Yeah. Again, you don't know how this guy treats her. Yeah. You don't yeah, know how, she, what she, she they wants. They have no idea. Valued by yeah. a man. And so they need to get to the root of why they're allowing that to happen. And it's tragic because they're ruining uh, what could potentially be a good relationship. By but it seems like it is a good relationship. He even said, it, this feels like true love. What about that would tell you that they have an unhealthy or bad relationship? Yeah. Pretending yeah. that they're together. Well, and how they are together. How are they pretending that they're together? <laughs> Didn't they date before they got married? Yeah. The time that they were dating, were they just pretending to be together or were they actually together? You, you can't just arbitrarily say that because they've been dating for a longer period of time than maybe you guys dated, that it's not real or something. And this is, again, maybe a little bit of Mark's wife, but probably mostly Mark always having to be the superior person in every single situation. He yeah. did everything right. And everyone else who doesn't do exactly what he does is wrong and horrible and awful and sinful. Yeah. How humiliating and embarrassing is it for the woman? Like, this is my boyfriend. How long have you guys been dating? You know, I mean, yeah. since before Trump was president. You know, like, <laughs> oh, oh. That's not humiliating or embarrassing yeah. at all. It's only actually humiliating or embarrassing if she's surrounded by self-righteous pricks yeah. like Mark Driscoll. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> she, the only person she'd probably receive for... The only type of people she'd receive that type of response from would be people like Mark Driscoll. Yeah. So if you just go to a random person on the street and say like, hey, we've been dating for 10 years, people would be like, oh, okay. Yeah. No big deal. Like, there's, why is that weird? <laughs> there's no reason to be ashamed of something if it's not being stigmatized in the first place. So the people who are to blame for the shame are actually the, the people that are shaming. And in this case, this would be these two people on camera right now. Yeah. Do you guys have any plans? No? I mean, that just speaks a lack of commitment, consideration. Um, and to me, we live in this bizarre day where we have just, we have really emptied marriage of a lot of its meaning. Yeah. And it's something sacred created by God. And it's a covenant that belongs to God. And so, you know. It's a gift from God. Yeah, it is, to be sure. And um, I'm cool with you wanting to say that you see marriage that way as a gift from God and covenant from mm -hmm. God and a blessing from God, all these things. And it, it is that for you and that you think that like it, you know, marriage is a great thing that has all those spiritual benefits. But then when you use that to say that people who are not engaging in, you know, reaping those spiritual benefits are physically abusing people and are mentally unwell and are lacking commitment and are immature, that's a massive leap, which you cannot logically make from the spiritual beliefs that you have. Mm -hmm. It's a complete, like, logical fallacy there. Yeah. I don't know if they know Jesus, but if they claim to, this is really completely inexcusable in any way, because at some point over the last 10 years, the Holy Spirit has convicted yeah. them of this issue. And you know that because you've been like living in their closet, watching them every moment to see if they start talking to the Holy Spirit, or are you just assuming that because you don't even know who these people are? Yeah, That's it. they're acting as though they've like read their diaries or something, and they know every single thing about them. It's... I mean, who knows if they felt like the Holy Spirit has convicted them about that? Yeah, I mean, I I'm assuming that maybe they have, based on the fact that the person's asking this question in the first place. Yeah, but. I mean, up until now, maybe they've just been completely fine with dating and don't feel like marriage is that important in their relationship. So I, I just, I can't with all of the assumptions they're making. It's kind of crazy. If you claim to know what the Holy Spirit does with so much accuracy and precision that you can predict what the Holy Spirit has done in somebody else's life, even if they are contradicting that... I mean, you're, you're putting your judgment above theirs and putting your spiritual discernment above their ability to spiritually discern what the Holy Spirit has done. And really, to me, that seems like that's actually kind of a form of blasphemy. 
You know, like mm. I know the Holy Spirit so well that even if you tell me, you know, your experience being the only thing that is close to evidence of what the Holy Spirit has done for you, that he has or has not done this. Like, you know, I don't just, I don't believe you. I know better than any interaction that you and the Holy Spirit could have. You're kind of saying, I know better than the Holy Spirit. I know better than God, or I know as well as God. And that is blasphemy within Christianity. You're not God, Mark Driscoll. You don't, oh, well. you don't know what's happening in other people's lives or in other people's, you know, like spiritual practice or like walk with God. You don't. Well, in his world, he does. Yeah. <laughs> so should she just break up with him? Yes. Okay, great. Close in prayer. <laughs> Why break up? It doesn't seem like there's any sort of problem in their relationship at all. And so you're basically looking to destroy this perfectly fine relationship that's existed for 10 years, this bond between these two people, yeah. because it you don't like it. Yeah, it's it not what you would do. Right. So now you're going to destroy it. Yeah, it's pretty gross. <laughs> No, seriously. Yeah. I mean, they can try and go into counseling. No, but... <laughs> no, 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 no. Because at the end of the day, you just break up with him. And then if he does want to do it right, start over. Stop sleeping together. Go to church. Meet with wise counsel. Because... I mean, they're probably in church right now. So. <laughs> yeah, if they care about asking you this question, then sure. Yeah, they are. You can't build anything on this foundation. And there you go. They talked about how it was with God's spiritual blessing, you could be completely broke and destitute and have a terrible life, but still have God's blessing. But then they say that you can't build a actually tangibly healthy, successful life without God's blessing. Mm -hmm. That does not make any sense. You can't say that something that is only spiritual has effects in the real world and you can predict them. You can't do that without actually demonstrating that. And it is impossible to measure the supernatural. Like, please do yeah. actual, like, research, scientific research on what the spiritual blessing does. Can you even define that? Yeah, what's the point of having the, like, having a spiritual blessing if it, you can't actually tangibly see it doing anything? Yeah. What's the point in that then? There's no point in actually having it, but there is point in saying that you have it so that you can other people mm -hmm. and belittle people who disagree with you so that you can codify power as a religious leader. Yeah. That's what they're doing. Yeah. Well, and it's so that no matter what happens, no matter if like their relationship is good or bad, they can still point back to their God. Yeah. Every single situation points back to their God with exactly. that kind of reasoning. No, it's codependency. Yeah. And so you've got, even if it's going to work out, it's not going to work out right. built on this They foundation. need a new start. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Break right. up with them. Okay. <laughs> Break. <Right>. Yep. <laughs> All right. So... Let's let's review here just to make sure we have this straight. They're going to have all these bad outcomes and the only way that they can have better outcomes than, you know, the bad outcomes that have not even been demonstrated to exist in the first place is to do a specific ritual. There's no research, there's no evidence presented whatsoever mm -hmm. that shows that that specific ritual is correlated to or has any causal effect on better outcomes at all. And they even acknowledge that you can still have horrible outcomes with that blessing. And that blessing does not give you better outcomes necessarily. Yeah. This is nonsense. Yeah, it is a bunch of nonsense. For Mark Driscoll, I think it's just masturbation. Like he just gets to be on stage and talk about how, you know, the only right thing to do is doing things how I've done. And if you're not doing it how I'm doing it and believe what I believe and think what I think, then you're somehow inferior to me. You're, you know, this horrible, sinful person. And so I think it's just about him feeling powerful. Yeah. Because although I think a lot of pastors would think, like a lot of evangelical pastors would probably think that dating for 10 years isn't a good idea and that sex before marriage is a sin... I don't think that they would go to the lengths of like publicly shaming and making all these assumptions about these people yeah. as Mark Driscoll did. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that this is like next level. Yeah, my, my my you know youth pastor who's now the pastor of my former church, if he got this question, I mean, I think the thing would be foremost in his mind, and this is a this is a fundamentalist pastor, by the way, would be I need to show these people grace and love and compassion so that they will be 
you know, basically enticed by the love of Jesus that, that people show them. And as a leader, mm-hmm. I have to exemplify that with every word that I speak. And then he would, you know, he would disagree with it. And he would say that, like, I think that, you know, that's not God's perfect plan for you. But like, I love you. Please come to me in private and we'll speak about these things. And we'll, you know, we'll come up with a plan for you to, you know, act within God's will. He would not be laughing at them. Mm -hmm. He would not be insinuating the person's an abuser. What is that going to do other than just codify your own personal, you know, image and power as like this strong man demagogue? It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. We know that Mark Driscoll has been called out for abusive behavior. He had to resign from his previous church because he was emotionally abusing his staff members. Yeah. And yet it seems like he's learned completely nothing from that because it definitely seems like he's doing pretty much the exact same thing in his current church. And I was actually reading an article from uh, the Friendly Atheist that came out in 2021 where they were talking about how Mark Driscoll actually had uh, like kind of ran out a family from his church and had them surveilled because uh, the son of the family was dating Mark Driscoll's daughter and he felt like Mark found out that they kissed. What? And so he got so upset and like pissy over that, that apparently he ran his entire family out of the church and like was having people following them. Yeah. Well, in his defense, the only thing that matters is what fathers think. (laughs) Well, his daughter belongs to him. Right. She's his property. So (laughs) he's always going to be like this. It's clearly he has a narcissistic personality. Oh yeah. And I, I, the fact that there are still people that will platform him, the fact that there are still people that will attend his church is very, very frightening to me. And the more information we can get out there about him and the more we can counter the bullshit that he's spreading, I think the better because he he's not a person that anyone should be listening to. Yeah. And I think that Christians and non-Christians like ourselves can work together to do that. I mean, you don't yeah. have to be no. a non-Christian like us to think that this is someone using Christianity to codify power for themselves and abusing people in the process. Yeah, yeah. And actually the um, Rise and Fall of Mars Hill podcast that kind of did like a big expose on Mars Hill and Mark Driscoll and really shed light on all the abuse that he's perpetuated. That was done by Christianity Today. Yeah. So I, I think it's not just us, not just atheists, but other Christians that can call out this kind of behavior. For sure. Um, But I've been keeping track of every single assumption and everything that they've said about this person asking the question. So as a reminder, all they said was, we've been dating for 10 years. Is it a sin? And they said that this person's a child, irresponsible, unhealthy, just wants sex, is an idiot, is suppressing the truth, looking for excuses, Um, said that the the girlfriend is not a well person and that she is emotionally and physically unsafe, basically saying that it's a possibility that he's physically abusing her, Uh, is afraid of commitment, manipulative, his parents are probably divorced, (laughs) that he doesn't value his girlfriend, that she should break up with him, and that they're codependent with each other. So from this little question, it snowballed into this fantasy world of their making basically you guys don't deserve any kind of power i hope you fail yeah for real bye (laughs) (laughs) thanks so much for watching and a huge thank you to my patrons who help make these videos possible if you like this video please be sure to subscribe and ring the bell if you'd like to follow me on social media my instagram is taylor underscore the underscore antibot and my twitter is the antibot if you'd like to consider supporting this channel financially a link to my patreon will be in the description and i'll see you on the next one say bye